everybody arriving. Uh, yeah. Okay, slowly, slowly, they are coming in. <clears throat> okay, so I think we can start now. Um, so welcome back to uh, the final panel of uh, today's conference. Um, our panel four, uh, starting with uh, Martin Walsh, who is going to present uh, on um, uh, doe palms, those uh, speckled green snake. I probably mis mis mispronounced some words. Uh, bear with me, Martin. Okay, so over to you. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. And can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so hello and uh, Habari Zaku lost as, a, as an in-law of mine in Mombasa um, used to greet me. Um, my talk today is, is, is about words and it's about the connections between them and in the long durée over time what the analysis of those connections can tell us and, it's be and, and what it's beginning to tell me about some aspects of the Swahili speaking world in the past. And at the same time, I want to highlight the importance of Swahili lexicography, of etymological and historical linguistic research, and the considerable potential for developing these intertwined uh, branches of study. And in his great dictionary of the English language, Samuel Johnson famously described a, le a lexicographer as a harmless drudge. He was, of course, making fun of, of himself, but having spent a large part of lockdown um, uh, last year, busying myself in, quote, um, in tracing the original and detailing the signification of words, end of quotes, I can't disagree, though I'm immensely grateful to earlier dictionary makers, the real lexicographers, for their labors. Although Swahili is Johnson, Frederick, um, can't match the wit of, of Samuel, and while the language doesn't yet have anything to compare with the Oxford English Dictionary, it, it does have Sackler's superb dictionary of different dialect forms um, shown on the slide there at the left. And we also have Nurse and Hinebush's magnum opus of, 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 of comparative linguistics. Um, we've got Lodi and others' studies of word borrowing and a growing number of good dialect dictionaries and vocabularies. And, and these are precious resources and excellent starting points for further research, as they have been for me since the, the pandemic began in particular. And prompted by the request to contribute to, to, to a festry for a, a, a colleague, a, a, an Austronesianist, I, I began by researching and writing a paper on the early history of Swahili nautical technology um, before distilling some of its main conclusions in a shorter, less technical um, article. Um, as it happens that the pop piece shown on the, on the left on the slide, the popular piece was published first, a uh, date wise at least. It, it still, it seems to still be in press, although it's uh, dated 2020, it hasn't, it's still at the printers, I think, but uh, I've, I've had a, a copy of it for a while. But I actually wrote the, the longer, more detailed paper um, from dugouts to double outriggers. Um, I, I, I actually wrote that before and it, it's got much more detail. And I won't attempt to summarize um, all of that detail now, but I will just outline one of the most striking etymologies um, in it, and that's of the Swahili word Dao. Um, and if you want to read or, or and or download the, the two papers, um, they're on my acad academia pages, um, as shown in the link at the bottom there. So it's no accident, of course, um, 
and I, I don't think it's an accident, that Swahili Dao and English Dao, um, D-H-O-W, sound the same. Um, and they're generally um, both traced to an Indian or other source in the, in, in, in the region of the Arabian Sea. There, there have been all sorts of, of, of proposals. And Agius, who's uh, who, uh, in the work shown on the right there, he, he notes att attestations dating back to the 18th century um, in, in, in that sort of um, uh, Arabian Sea area. Um, Hornell and others um, who have suggested a Swahili origin for the, for the Swahili word um, Dao, um, uh, they're in a minority, but they've not been able to provide convincing linguistic evidence for this. Um, and the, the reason for this, perhaps, or, or, or it, 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 it's not a particular fault of theirs, but uh, the reason is, 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 because they, is because nobody's really looked um, beyond the standard Swahili form of the word, which we all know as Dao, plural, Madao. Um, and, and this is a common mistake in, in, in research of, of this kind. And, and I must say, I've been making it myself for, for a number of years. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a kind of linguistic laziness um, and rigorous investigation of etymologies in Swahili. It really requires um, cross-dialectal study, um, cross-dialectal comparison, comparison across the, the forms in, dif in different dialects. Um, you can't just make assumptions uh, uh, from, 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 from what you hear in, 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 in the, the, the different standard Swahili forms. And this slide, um, it, it shows such a comparison superimposed on a, on a composite uh, version of Nurse and Hinebuch's um, classification of, of, of the Swahili dialects. It, it's mainly Nurse's classification that, that was then uh, developed and, and, and presented in, 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 in their um, 1993 book. Um, <clears throat> although it's, it's never quite spelled out uh, uh, fully there. And, and as this shows, there are some forms of the word Dao, um, both north and south, which like Tumbatu Dalu have an intervocalic L. They've got an L in the middle. Um, and it's also found in, in, as you can see, it's up in Mwini right up there in Somali and Barawa. It's also found in borrowings in Shambar, uh, Giriyama and other neighboring languages. Um, and this allows us to reconstruct or at least posit um, a, a proto Swahili form, which um, I'd written there um, following Nurse and Hinebush's model and conventions as, 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 uh, as, as Idalu. Um, there, there are questions about the, the quality of that, that, that first dowel, uh, vowel, sorry, um, and, and who knows if I'm pronouncing it right, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll say it as a, this reconstructed form as, as Idalu. Um, <clears throat> And as they argued, L loss um, is a relatively late process in Swahili. Um, I mean, it happened at different times in different places, but the, uh, there are some late 18th century records of, of this word um, with, a, with, a, with an L as um, written as, as Delos or in some French uh, um, documents as Delis. Um, and they're clearly attempts to write down the, the, an earlier form of this word, uh, a form similar or probably the same as that Tumbatu form there, Dalu, <clears throat> or it might well have been from other dialects. Um, the adoption of the L-less um, Swahili form in, in languages around the Arabian Sea uh, remains to be proven and worked out in detail. Exactly how that word was taken up remains to be shown, but it, way me it may well be, um, I would argue, that Dao is the oldest uh, or certainly one of the oldest words of Swahili origin um, in English, other perhaps than older records of, of toponyms of place names that, that, you, that you find in, in older documents. But if, if anybody knows an older Swahili word in English then, or candidate for, for a Swahili word in English, please, please let me know. Um, the only Swahili boat name that's demonstrably, or, or in fact, isn't it actually fully demonstrable, older than Proto Swahili Idalu, is the generic term for a vessel, Proto Swahili Kyombo, 
the standard chombo um, vessel of different kinds. Hence, it, you know, it became, um, as it developed from proto sabaki it became um, the name for a boat, or, or when exactly that happened is, is difficult to determine. The Iconicum Tepe of, um, of, um, uh, 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 of, of, of um, the Lamu Archipelago and Bajuni tradition, um, in my analysis, is a Northern Swahili innovation. And it's not the truly ancient sewn boat that's sometimes made out to be. So Proto-Swahili Dalu has its own deeper history, as this slide shows. Um, and I, I won't expect you to absorb it all at, at once. It, it's, it's the augmentative. I mean, Dalu is, 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 in my analysis, it's the augmentative of, of an old name for water bailers. Um, um, which coincidentally we had mentioned uh, earlier this morning. It, it's an old name for water bailers, which are essential to keeping sewn boats afloat because they're so leaky. It, it's a notorious characteristic of, of sewn boats, even the historical records of them on the, on the Swahili coast that um, without teams of bailers, they were, they were often in trouble. And, and this word, it derives ultimately from the name for doom palms. Um, which presumably supplied the leaf strips um, that bailers were woven from. I've never seen one of these, or, 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 or um, there, there, I think there are some sort of descriptions uh, of them, but I've never seen a, a, a picture of one. Um, if anybody has, again, please let me know. And the term for this material, for this, these woven strips, and so the bailers themselves, um, earlier Ndalu, again with an L, Ndalu, um, separately, in a quite separate development, it provided the Midjikenda name um, for speckled green snakes and other members of the, of the genus Philothamnus. Um, and I show that in the bottom left corner there. It may also have generated another set of environmental terms in nearby Northeast Coast Bantu languages, um, shown um, a, a, the series shown up at the, the top right in blue but I don't have the evidence, I don't have enough lexical evidence to, to sort of demonstrate um, the, the precise connections, um, but it, I, I consider that a possibility. Um, in addition to tracking the etymology of, of other boat names and nautical terms in the same way, I've also been working on um, the names of marine fauna and, related, and the related vocabulary of fishing and, and foraging um, at sea and on the shoreline. Uh, and one of the challenges in reconstructing these particular lexical fields is the lack of data for Sabaki languages other than Swahili and Comorian, for the obvious reason that, that, that um, you know, others um, don't re uh, occupy the, uh, you know, the, the coastline and, and aren't engaged in, 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 in that economy, that coastal economy to the same extent, um, although in some the individual communities and, and individuals are. Um, likewise, I've been looking at names of terrestrial uh, fauna and flora, including birds. This, by the way, is a slide from um, uh, an earlier presentation. Um, by matching reconstructions with species distributions, um, it's possible to make inferences about linguistic geography in the past. Um, which is a particular interest on the East African coast and islands because of the evident import importance of, of long distance mi migration historically. I've also been working on cultivated plants and most recently um, the vocabulary of, of banana plants and the different varieties, the cultivars, uh, uh, banana cultivars, different types of bananas. Um, and I, I, I've been engaged this year in a, in a, in a, a long running conversation with, with banana geneticists, um, morphologists and others studying the history of bananas uh, uh, and their introduction to and diversification in, in Eastern Africa. And that includes um, some of the people on this paper that you might just be able to see at the bottom right of the slide um, 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 published by um, um, a couple of years ago by Xavier Perrier and uh, others. Um, so we've, we've been together with the, the, the Belgian linguist Kern Boston and his team, we've been in a sort of conversation about different aspects of this history, including the linguistic aspects. 
Um, that, that's none of this is published yet, let me hasten to add. Um, <clears throat> the etymological studies of, of, of different lexical fields attest to me, anyway, they attest to, to what I call the genius of, of Swahili and, and related languages. Their creativity, this is a kind of collective creativity now, their collective their creativity and adaptability. Um, and they also continue to produce surprising connections, um, questioning old uh, certainties and enabling us to formulate new hypotheses. Um, once you start looking and, and probing, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, probing etymology in detail, all, all sorts of interesting things start to come out, and, and many of them, you know, can sort of it, well, they take my breath away anyway. Um, and the work on bananas, for example, has exposed some long cherished false etymologies, um, as well as highlighting the importance of unexpected relationships in, in the past. For example, between the speakers of Malagasy and Comorian um, on one hand, and those of the languages of Northeast Tanzania on the other, inland to, uh, to, to, to Kilimanjaro. Um, and I could give you a number of examples, but there's one just shown at the bottom of this slide where, well, it's not spelled out, but this word Mlali, which um, uh, occurs in Swahili banana names and also I think some uh, Comorian ones, um, is find way inland on, on, on Kilimanjaro. It actually, it actually derives, um, it seems, from an older um, Eastern Bantu word for, for soot. Um, which still survives as well in, in, in Swahili and, and, and Comorian. Um, and and sort it's because of that, the sort of black markings on that, those particular varieties of bananas. And there's lots of examples like that and some su surprising long distance connections, for example, between Comorian and um, Shambar and, and related languages. In Martin, North you Japan. have one minute left. Okay. And I'm getting there. And zooming in on Swahili, um, the work of cross dialectal comparison has led me to reconsider an old suggestion of Bernd Hines that the boundary between North and South Swahili dialects could be, could be drawn to the north of Mombasa rather than to the south, as Derek Nurse um, did. And whatever the case, lexical data from the Mombasa dialects has to be treated cautiously as evidence for historical reconstruction given the mix of Northern and Southern influences. And more recently, Derek Nurse himself has cast doubt on his early analysis of the North-South split and the historical implications. Um, there's also, I'll just mention this, this briefly, is also, it also casts into doubt um, um, earlier conclusions about, about the, the location of the Swahili homeland. In fact, the Sabaki homeland in the north, in the region of the Tana Delta and Lamu archipelago. Um, and for various reasons, I think it's actually much more likely that that homeland was, was further to the south, somewhere between Mombasa, Tanga, that sort of area, uh, that kind of what's now a current border area. Um, and last not, but, but not least, there's also a growing body of archeological evidence which can be used in conjunction with these refinements of dialect classification to redate Swahili settlement and migration histories. And on, on the linguistic side, this kind of revision is, is, is only possible because of the quantity and quality of data that is currently available. Um, and at the same time, there are huge gaps in our knowledge and our ability to fill these gaps is threatened by dialect and especially lexical loss um, every word that is unrecorded and lost from cultural memory is a loss to the historical genius of, of Swahili. It won't stop the development of the language in some of the ways we've heard today, um, but our knowledge and understanding will arguably, arguably uh, be poorer for it. And that is um, the you. end. Asantene, thank you very much for listening. Um, thank you very much, uh, Martin. Um, excellent presentation. I'm sure there will be questions later on. Uh, thank you so much. And if you could just stop sharing, that's great. And then we can now uh, go to our next speaker, uh, Donald Maingi, 
who is going to talk about um, the Nyerara archives of the Free Swahili. So his, um, his research is um, in, uh, linked to art, um, art and society. Uh, so the floor is yours, Mark Donald. You can start, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Asante Nisana. Um, um, I, I, I will begin by just saying that um, um, I began this research uh, really thinking hard about uh, Swahili etymology and uh, really thinking about the whole idea of translation and in, in the kind of uh, territory that we are in at the moment, uh, where we are talking about, uh, as art historians, we're talking about the decolonization of the museum or museological thinking, uh, introducing um, an uh, African-centered um, uh, thinking about artifacts uh, from Africa and uh, their histories. Uh, I found myself very, very unsettled in, uh, while looking at, you know, broadly uh, key terms like art archive and um, art image and the archive that is Sana, uh, Taswira and Nyaraka. Now my presentation today, um, I will deal with uh, the whole aspect of archives, um, the archival memory. Uh, in, in this sense, uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, the Nyarakas of the, uh, of the free Swahili, seeking art and rediscovering heritage of a post-emancipation ruin. Um, I seek to briefly explore how contemporary artists in Kenya have engaged uh, the Swahili intangible, intangible cultural heritage, specifically focusing on the fourth and the fifth Wasani um, International Art Workshops that were held in Lamu in the years 2005 and 2006, respectively. As an artist who practiced at uh, Nairobi School of Trust uh, in the early 1990s, I remember being very fascinated by the idea that artists would engage with uh, Swahili heritage under the Triangle Network uh, Residential Workshop model which was founded in the 1980s by British artist Anthony Carroll and collector and philanthropist Robert Loder. 15 years later, uh, I, got I got consumed in, in, uh, into musing on the scene, um, wondering how these artists responded to Swahili heritage and its monumental ruins. Um, daily tra traversing the Lamu archipelago and its narrow residential uh, back streets with buildings that are evidence of Swahili uh, cosmopolitan heritage. Not least the pictorial site of uh, Swahili monumental greens, as well as uh, the, uh, the view of the picturesque view of tin roofs, uh, dried co coconut fronts, uh, smooth walls with intricate carved niches, uh, carved uh, wooden doors, and many more. Um, also, interacting with age old legacies of Swahili post emancipation, which occurred along the Indian Ocean island as um, former slaves became further constrained by colonial legacies, uh, although locally considered as villain, villain. Um, certainly the triangle workshop model provided for these international artists an ample opportunity to interact with uh, Swahili, uh, Swahili heritage beyond the touristic gaze. They sought to develop an ecosystem of ideas as artists freely dialogued with process within process led activities coalescing ideas experiences histories and imagination within a collective aim of producing an unfinished process 
comp one that was comparable to the subtlety uh, that the old fundi or master craftsman of the Lamu Island, um, um, how he, he would become inspired by a kind of multimodal dimensional uh, uh, Swahili ornamentation pro, uh, grammar um, and its creativity regained through the art of carving intricately decorated uh, door panels, carpentry, uh, the art of Swahili poetry, singing, sculpting on walls, uh, letter decorations and calligraphy uh, to mention but a few. These art forms formed a de decisive leitmotif for contemporary artists to interact with Swahili heritage as they laid creative siege um, uh, of, of the heavily fortified Fort Jesus in Mombasa, pensively sitting at its terraces constructed in 1593 and designed by Italian architect Joao Battista. The fourth was a new workshop in 2005, as recorded by Hadija Buanada Ernst, um, encouraged artists to seek uh, for things or stimulating environments that will enable them uh, produce art. This range, but was not limited uh, to the variety of the objects that I've just mentioned, uh, to the textures, the unique textures, the smells, the tastes, um, and the sp specifically the textures of, of, of uh, the textured walls of live coral stone and plaster. Um, at the fifth uh, was a new workshop, however, curated by Johnny Waite, um, Alamo, based artist and founder of gallery Watatu in Nairobi. Uh, the, the workshop provided for the artists uh, a deliberate opportunity to deconstruct how the, those found sources of inspiration um, uh, problematize early heritage. This unfinished process of seeking for art uh, while at the same time rediscovering heritage presented useful platforms for artists to consciously investigate and contemplate how the creative and conceptual de dematerialization of art, language, and heritage occurs uh, to revalue history. By this, I mean uh, establishing a conceptual coeval, uh, coeval uh, relationship with the invisible cultural heritage beyond merely gazing at its embodied objects uh, to capture the lived yet imaginary topos and cultural uh, topographies that exemplify the Swahili post-emancipation green. I will define this process a bit later, but this paper seeks to examine how these artists interacted with the ethereal if, if, if daily Nyaraka or Swahili archives that became manifest in, uh, um, by the problematic past legacies and heritage of the ones run away or free, freed slaves. Um, this inspired uh, Sudanese artists, El Tayeb, the world Dewal Bait and Kenyan artist Prina Shah uh, participating in the 2006 workshop, Wasani workshop, to pay, pay more attention to the surreal, surreal uh, surface textures and muted colors of its old walls. Um, from the earliest records, such as the first centuries, uh, uh, Greek. Uh, CE Greek uh, navigational chart, that is the peri periplus of the Eritrean Sea, we are made aware of the fact that Swahili culture was shaped by the spellbound uh, economic system of slaveholding along the East African coast. Ptolemy, uh, third century geography, recorded similar observations, even 
as scholars have widely examined the archaeology of slave uh, uh, Swahili slavery and slave trade from East Africa to uh, uh, the East African coast and beyond. The presence of an unusual iconography um, of uh, broad blade spear carving on the right side, right side of the 12th century Gedi ruins seen in figure one, uh, East Norway is poses to me interest, it, uh, some interesting uh, features. Uh, this monumental ruin excavated by James Kapman between between 1948 and 1950, uh, principally problematized uh, such an association uh, of creativity and uh, Swahili heritage objects with uh, 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 um, the kind of repute of slave trading. Since uh, Kapman's dis discovery within the same uh, site uh, of the, uh, to, since his discovery of the Wasegeju uh, fine uh, finger nail uh, ornamented cooking pots uh, presented uh, interesting evidence on their eventual revolt against uh, Swahili Arabization under the uninterrupted period uh, of, of Port Portuguese presence. They also made say, siege. Uh, uh, of uh, Fort Jesus with the Oman Arabs from 1696 uh, to uh, 1698. Uh, Gedi's mysterious decline and eventual decay uh, presents to us the, uh, that unique problem, um, how to reenact a ruin and its cultural, historical and creative process of ruination within Swahili culture. Uh, by extension, how artists uh, laid siege at the Lamu Fort and uh, undergoing the cultural process of ruination as, a, as also a creative process, uh, one which uh, George Abungu and Mohammed Mchula Mohammed, uh, for instance, associated to the enduring pr uh, practice where the Mombasa Swahili occasionally used old uh, ruined mosques as places of spirit propitiation. A ruin or gofu um, denotes amongst the Swahili a broken down thing that enacts or uh, rather brings to form the word wongofu, um, translated as righteousness, which further denotes an evolving conceptual life cycle of spiritual formation, decay, and renaissance. renaissance. Uh, such reenactment is reminiscent in the Swahili say, saying shown in figure three um, by Kenyan artist Larissa Hoops, um, uh, which was displayed in 2010 at the Luristic a uh, res restaurant in Nairobi. It depicts disjointed frames of, uh, Swahi of the Swahili Kanga uh, produced in Mombasa bearing the 19th century saying, Huba Kuna na hus Hisani Hukumbuki, translated as, you can't re remember something you don't know. Uh, here, collective memory and cultural amnesia are thus, imp are thus implied to interactively remain hidden within the visceral views of the ruin. Um, whose majesty, as, 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 as we all know, is deeply resonated in the 79th stanza along uh, a Swahili poem, Al Inkishafi, composed by Said Abdallah bin Ali Nasir between uh, 1810 and 1820 AD. Alinti Shafi um, motivates us to question the ruined heritage using the Swahili metaphor, Chembelecho, or what went before. A, a, a form of questioning that uh, remains uh, characteristically adduced at the 
2006 was a new international workshop by the Australian artist Maria Buckner through her in installation titled Catching Sunrays, as shown in figure, figure four. Its depiction of the metaphorical act of catching sunrays or kukamata mialea jua is represented by projecting golden threads of, uh, uh, from a single mangrove pole hang, hanging uh, above uh, either the terraces of for, uh, or for, for Jesus or um, the bright Lamu beach, perhaps to depict its revelation uh, of the site of history. At the 2005 Wasani uh, International Artist Workshop, um, Indian artist Mithusen's installation uh, titled Bant in the Sun, show, as shown, sorry, as shown in figure five, engaged a similar representation of the uh, intriguing warmth and wisdom of the Lamb story. This uh, enchanted ancient archipelago that remains a paradise of on borrowed time, whose uh, beauty is burnt in the sun for its rich and complex lived oral histories to, uh, that, that preserve uh, its original character. Yet Mithusen's um, choice to project this Lamu story at Fort Jesus pre presented perhaps a feminist dis disclosure of the veil as a site of intellectual inquiry in its canopy-like enclosure, the historical life behind the translucent black fabric uh, uh, is displayed in Hadija Bonada Ernst, uh, Ernst's view uh, that symbolizes the traditional uh, Zanzibari bui bui. Hence, um, unveiling to us her depiction of its dramatic suggested turbulence within Mombasa women's uh, uh, many socio-political spheres of negotiating diverse taswira or images that shaped Swahili identities. The black veil flapped by the coastal wind adjacent to six Swahili decorated uh, wooden panels laid on the floor with middle sand father inscribing uh, using burnt marks, a poem on women's desires surely projected their voice as uns unsilenced. The, the display within the contained space of Fort Jesus exhumes to us um, historical imaginaries framed by a dark past, allured by uh, the historical uh, expulsion of the Portuguese uh, at Fort, Fort Jesus under a 30-month uh, uh, siege of the Omani Arabs in, in 1698, an event which further led to the fracturing of the Swahili coast uh, with uh, the alliance between the superior forces of Mombasa and Pate in 1812 leading uh, leading a battle uh, that that further led to an excruciating loss uh, against the weaker but united lamu on the sand dunes uh, uh, of the village of shella uh, which is uh, occasionally celebrated by lamu painting festivals uh, at uh, donald sorry to interrupt you are uh, you have literally one minute left Okay, yeah. By questioning how the majestic uh, silent, silence of these old monuments or ruins uh, are projected by Swahili memory and identity and artists, um, I, I, I'm kind of persuaded to, to look at art as a, a, a problematization of its uh, etymology, etymological, uh, of its uh, meaning a sana uh, or in terms of, of its uh, based on tradition of Tamaduni, a name that stems from the Arabic root Medina, dating back to 8th to uh, 15th century Muslim rule of 
uh, Andalus um, in, in the sense that it, it projects the idea of guaranteed permanence that James Dever uh, has problematized and also that uh, Sana projects the idea of a sacred geography of Sana city in Yemen and its meta historical and mythical time. Um, uh, the case that I place forward is looking at the um, the the the, the evol kind of the evolution of the um, reinvention of the Matatu object, especially in Mombasa, uh, in Mtuapa and uh, Mikindani, uh, Mtuapa being uh, at the northern Mombasa and the rural Mikindani producing uh, this Mikindani beast is specifically interest, interesting uh, uh, in terms of redefinition of what I call the Swahil Gofu or the post emancipation uh, ruin, um, especially looking at the current exhibition that is ongoing at the National Museums of Kenya, um, Kesho Kutwa, um, where artists are still reinventing the past um, as uh, Paul Onditi's work uh, uh, 2020 painting uh, enveloped uh, here suggests. Um, and so this all uh, presents the Swahili me uh, Metali Kanga Hazai Ujani or the Guinea fowl breeds not in captivity. Um, Asante Nisan. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Donald. Um, excellent presentation. And uh, as you know, I'm, I have a, spe a special interest in the arts, so I was very, very interested to hear. Um, now, uh, in the interest of time, let's move on to our next speaker, uh, Christina Nicolini from SOAS. Uh, welcome back, Christina. Uh, Donald, I think you left. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, Christina, no. <laughs> I think you're there. Yes, welcome. Uh, so, uh, Christina is a, a PhD student, just finished a PhD at SOAS, and she's going to uh, talk about the novel Kua uh, Kua Mawa. Thank you, Christina. The floor is yours. Thank you. And I'm going to speak in Swahili for my presentation, I'm trying to share the screen at first. Yes. So wasilisho wangu una lenga kutambulisha riwaya ya kuwa kwa maua ambaye ni riwaya ya mwisho iliyoandika na William Kufia. Na Mkufia ndiye ni mwandishi mashuri anayehusika swala la bibi ukimwi kupitia taswira ya kifalsafa kwa kutunga riwaya za wala faraja na kuwa kwa maua. Tungo bini za simulisi ya tungo tatu itakayoitwa diwani ya maua. Aida Mkufia ni mshiriki mkuu wa tafiti zangu tangu kipindi cha utafiti wa wandani nchini Tanzania wakati wa shahada ya uzamili. William Kufia amezaliwa mkoani Lushoto kwenye kabila la Kisamba katika familia ya Kikristo ingawa yeye mwenyewe ana mitazamo ya kiagnostiki. Ana eh, Mkufia ni mwandishi mwanariwaya lakini pia ni mwariri na mfasiri na anandika kazi zake kwa lugha mbili Kiswahili na Kiingereza na hii imemwezesha kuwa moja wa Watanzania wa kwanza kutafsiri kazi zao wenyewe. Vitabu vyake vilivyochapishwa ni vifuatavyo. The Wicked Work alichotafsiri mwenyewe kwa Kiswahili kikaitwa Kizazi hiki. The Dilemma Zirahili na Zirani riwaya ya kifalsafa iliyoandikwa kwa mtindo wa usimulizi wa kitendi. Kuwa la faraja na kuwa kwa maua. Pamoja na riwaya fupi za vijana kama vile Wema Moko Anoa, Face Under the Sea na The Ride and the Clips. Katika kipindi changu cha kuwa kwa uwanja wa utafiti niliofanyika kati ya Oktoba 2019 mpaka April 2018 mpaka April 2019 jijini Dar es Salaam nilikuwa kama mshiriki na mtazamaji wa Mkufia akiwa kwenye maisha yake da kawaida. Na sehemu za trilogia au tungo tatu ya maua ambayo tunaichunguza leo ni riwaya mbili za kwanza ambazo zimechapishwa. 
yani wala faraja na kuwa kwa maua. Riwaya ya tatu bado iko katika kuandika. Katika kazi uh, kwa ujumla ni masimulizi ya ubunifu yaliyo na msingi wa mijadala wa kifalsafa na utafiti wa elimu nafsi na usu maana ya maisha na fasi ya ngono katika maisha tisho la kufa ubilashi wa kidanishi minapohusishwa na sala na swala la bibi ukimi. Istiari ya maua katika masimulizi haya inaashiria taswira ya uwepo daifu wa walimwengu wa watu duniani kwa kuwa ingawa maua hupendeza ya kichanua hatimaye unyauka na kupotea lakini pia istiari ya maua inaenzi kuwapo kwa watu wema duniani watu wapenda zao kweli maisha ya walimwengu watu ni sawa sawa na maisha ya maua huwa la walimwengu watu ni punde ndogo tu ambapo watu kama maua wanapoishi na kuchanua huwa la faraja linamaanisha shada litumikalo katika mazishi kuwekwa juu ya sanduku alimolazwa maiti lakini pia ni mtu kama dr hans amenziwa kwa kuitwa uwa au mtu mwema uwa la jamii kutokana na matendo yake na usika wake kwenye riwaya riwaya hii ni tuzo la walisia na ni ramsa pia kwa vile inaishia na ushindi wa maisha migogoro yote imetatuliwa na dr hans amefaulu kuwa kwa faraja watu wote waliofiwa na ndugu kutokana na yuki kuwa kwa maua kuna maanisha kuwepo kwa watu wema. Wazuri kama maua. Hii ni riwaya ya kifalsafa na pia ni tanzia inayoishia na maisha kibulini mwa kifo. Ni riwaya inayotukumbusha udhaifu na ufupi wa maisha ya walimwengu watu wa wapo duniani. Malengo makuu ya trilogia ya maua ni tatu. Kushinda ofu ya kifo, kushinda tabia ya kufanya ngono ionekane kama uovu kushindana na mitazamo asi ya kidini kuhusu kifu na ngono katika muktada wa tatizo la bibi ukimi ambalo limekuwa kama miili unaunganisha vyote kifo ngono na dini kwa kutazama mundo wa trilogia naona kwamba ngawa hizi ni riwaya ninaziona zimeundwa na kujengwa kwa mtindo wa tamthilia kusema kweli riwaya hizi zimeundwa kwa sura na sehemu kuu za hadisi ambazo huweza kutazamwa kama maonyesho na matukio ya tamthilia Chambilecho mkufia mwenyewe, hadisi ya kiafrika shartikua na matukio ya kijukwa. Riwaya ya kuwa kwa maua inanzia pale hadisi ya wala faraja ni kuishia. Jina la kitabu inaweza kufafanuliwa kama maua ambayo ni sitiari na yuwakilisho na watu ambao wadumu na kuwa kuna maana ya kuwemo dunyani. Yani kueko. Kuna tafsiri sita za kulitafakari jina la kitabu. Yaani kuwa kama uwa inaweza kuwa um, kama watu wema, chanzo cha mashindano ya kitikadi baina ya uyakinifu, ukiwakilisha na wahusika wa Dr. Hans, na itikadi ya udanaifu, ikiwakilisha na muhusika wa Bibi Christina Jumbe, na kuwa kwa nyuzuri usio kudumu, yani maisha, kuwa kwa watu wenye wema kama Dr. Hans kudirika kwa utambuzi wa kiumbe kwake na kwa ulimwengu na kudirika kudirika kwa uhalisia wa maisha baada ya kuzaliwa na kabla ya kufa yani usifuri kabla na usifuri baada ya maisha Masimulizi ya kuwa kama uwa yamegawanywa katika sehemu sita Uchuru au mikosi ambayo imesawiriwa kwa sitiari za kijumba kibanda cha watoto kijeba mwanambuzi na kibunsi mchezo wa watoto wa asili wandawa yani wasichana wa babe kundi la tatu ni kudra au taktiri pia tunayo maisha ya ishayo katika sehemu hii doktansa na toa nadharia yake kuhusu ngono hofu ambayo imesawiriwa katika musika wa dija na ualifu ambao imesawiriwa kwenye musika wa zaoro tanzia ambayo imesawiriwa kwenye msururo wa vifo ya umolo ashakabeya tuma na hadija maombolezo ambayo kwayo fursa ya punde ya wai inajitambulisha na udairi wa uhai unajitambulisha kwenye mijadala ya haji na dr hans na itimisho uh, tuna uzazi na masumbuko yani kuzaliwa kwa mtoto na mateso ya grace na timaye kipo chake mwandishi ametumia sana watoto kusimulia tanzia ya kutisha 
kulingana na msemo usemao ukitaka kumpata mbuzi kamata mtoto wake Wosika wa kuni waenga yani watu wenye hekima na busara watu ambao wamesawiri nafasi ya falsafa kwenye riwaya yani dr Hans Ashakabeya na Christina Nyarnya na Mze Ibrahimu wanasawiri korasi sauti ya jumuiya ambao jitokeza kila pakitokea paki migogoro wakitumia nafasi yao kama wanajami kusuluhisha na kuleta amani Nyara amesawiriwa kama mtani halisi Kutba za mhusika shuja moja zinapambanishwa na sauti ya korasi ya jamii. Kwa mfano, upinzani mkuu hutokea baada ya utuba ya mwisho ya Dr. Hans. Upinzani huu unajisawiri kama kinza korasi kwa mhusika shuja. Upinzani mwingine kwa maubiri ya Hans unatokea kwenye kikundi cha wauni waliolewa. Hawa pia ni aina ya usika ambao na daria ya mkufia inawaitwa korasi ya kikorofi. Aina hii ya korasi ni kauli za kubeza au vijembe. Yaani a confrontative commentary zijitokezazo kwenye masimulisi ambazo uzusha ngazi nyingine katika dialogia iliyomo kwenye riwaya. Msimuliaji ndiye musika wanje wa masimulizi anayechukuana nafasi ya ufahamu wa kiungu au ujua ujua vyote ambaye anawakilisha sauti ya mwandishi. Mbuyo wa mkwezi ndiyo uliobeba kauli ya utabiri wa trilogia yote. Na semu ya kwanza ya riwaya uchuru inahusu wapo wa mambo ya kinyujiza, yanayotabiri maafa kwa nyetanzia ya riwaya. Yaani kijumba, kile kibanda cha michezo, kaburi la kijeba, alama ya mwanambuzi aliyekufa na mchezo wa kibunzi na vyote vinaunganisha kwenye sikiari ya mduara wa wai na kifo. Wandawa yani wasichana wa korofi ambao mmoja wapo ambaye ni mwafirika wa VDU alipigana na tuma na timaye kumwambukiza virusi. Nyumba ntoba kwia e, inahusu um, pale ambapo Asha na Kristina walienda kumsalimu Grace kwa kupongeza ujauzito wake na majirani waliona shereheni mbaya kwa sababu ilikuwa uchuru kutokana na imani kwamba si vizuri kusherekea mimba ambaye haijazaliwa. Usemi wa Kiswahili unasema usinunue mbele yako kabla ya mwana jazaliwa. Na kudra um, atimaye e, ni le kudra ya maisha usiepukika na inayoandamana wa usika wote. Watoto hawapati nafasi ya kutambua tofauti za ujinsia wao na kuzidadisi na kuzichunguza kwa uhuru kama tu manaji waliyofanya. Mkufi anasema Tukio la kwenye kijumba linakisi ukosoaji wa maisha ya siku hizi ambapo mafunzo ya majando na unyago yameachwa pamoja na ya unasi ya wazazi kwa vijana kuhusunga na kupungua. Kwa hiyo watoto na vijana ugundua ulimwengu wa ujinsia wao na tendo la ngono wenyewe au kwa kupitia vyanzo vipya vya habari. Vinavyowaelekeza kwenye matendo yanayowatarisha kwa hiyo ashakabeya na nyara wanatanyana na kuonyesha hatari na hasara za kukosekana kwa elimu ya majando. Pia mkufia um, anabomoa matazamo finyu kuhusu wanawake kipistemolojia kwa kujenga uhusika wa kike wenye msimamo isiyoyumbisha. Tumaini James anasawiriwa kama mtoto mwenye visirani ya kuzalia navyo kwa sababu hakubali kuonewa na napoisi zuluma au kukandamizwa na mtu yoyote atatoa pingamizi kubwa. Asha Kabeya ni mtutosha, ni mwanamke kamili asiyehitaji kukamilishwa na wanaume. Kusema kweli upana wa ufahamu wake na uwezo wake kichumi unalingana na ule wa wanaume. Anamejelimisha kikamilifu kutokana kwa bibi yake na pia aliyefundisha na Dr. Hans kutafakari na kujenga ufahamu wa kisayansi na kifalsafa. Mwanamke mnyonge kuliko wote ni Hadija ambaye amesawiriwa kuwakilisha ujinga. Hana elimu wa uwezo wa kiuchumi, kwa hiyo kwa usalama wake anakimbilia kwenye imani. Na kuisubiri kudra ya Mungu. Kukisomeka kama tasnifu ya kifalsafa kuwa kwa maua inazungukia kwenye hoja ya ma, za mazungumzo ya Shakabeya, Dr. Hans na Christina. Ashakabeya na wakilisha fikra za kidanaishi na kusema kwamba kuwepo kwa kifo 
unayafanya maisha ya kose maana, lakini anasema ni vyema kila mtu ni lazima aitumie fursa ya kuwa hai, kujifurahisha na raha zote za dunia, awezazo kuzipata. Usawiri wa msimamo wa asha ni kwenye furaha ya ngono, uyakinifu na kuzishuku imani. Katika riwaya, musika wa Dr. Hansen diye musika mku, na pia diye sauti ya mkufia katika riwaya. Hans amini wapu wa mungu wala wapu wa maisha bada ya kifo. Naweza kudirika kusema kwa mba kila mjadala kwa nyeriwaya hii hawishihu kwa ngaza mawazo ya kifalsafa peke, bali hujaribu kujua mdani wa mujiza wa maisha. Oja kuza Dr. Hans katika maubiri yake ni kama zifuatazo. Katika mazungumzo yake na asha, Hans ana oggi mujiza wa muda na utukutupu wa maisha. Nadaria ya Hans kusungono ima isimamia kwa nye muelekeo chanya wa epistemologia za kisayansi na kijami, na kwa maoni ya Hans ngono ni mujiza wa kibayologia. Hoja ya tatu ni hoja za kuzishuku imani za dini, wa gnostiki na uyakinifu, ambapo dana ya uwepu wa maisha bada ya kifu imebomolewa. Yani ni mujiza wakua na kutokua. Hoja za nene ni mujiza wa umana wa maisha. Katika dayalogia yaki ya pili na haji, ans aneleza kuwa umana au sababu wa maisha ni dana linganishi. Maisha ya mtu ni mduara wa kibayologia kama wawua. Mujiza wa kifu unaelezwa na hans kama sae mtu ya kukamilisha mduara wa maisha ya mtu. Hoja ya muisho ni kwenye karamu ya asha kushirikea kifu, amba kwa hans anaitaji miimili mikumitatu ya nadaria yake. Ambayo ni kutokuwa kwa kifu, udairi wa maisha na wendeleo wa mtu kwa jia ya uzazi. Semu ya muishu ya riwaya inaeleza kusu nadaria ya udairi. Isemayo kwa mba mtu wa kijuacho ni maisha ya nayo mdihirikia anapozaliwa. Musika wa Kristina anawakilisha itigadi ya udanifu inayo kabiliana na uyakinifu wa Dr. Hans. Wakati Kristina na kumuambia wa sali, Hans anamtania kwa kusema. Wewe sali, mimi na tafakari. Kwenye mobili yake katika msiba wa umoro na tuma, Kristina anapendekeza epistemologia jumuishi inayofanana na azimio la medina. Ritualo vivir bien. Ntanzamo jumuishi wa kuishi kwa maridiano duniani, kwa uyano na shirikiano mzuri na siri. Katika riwaya hii, mashuja wa kitanzia wa ote ni wakike na ni mawana mapindusi wale ogumea adabu ya kifu kwa ukimu. Na kwa mua kujito wa wai wa uwenyewe. Asha kabaya ni manga, anajuta na kujiona misababisha vifu ya watu wengine. Kwa hiyo anajua kwa makujito wa manga kwa jili ya ustawe muema wa jami. Kujiwa kwa tuma pia ni kujito wa manga kwa jili ya jami. Kwa sababu tangu muanzo alikuwa mpigani ya haki, haki wa wakilisha wa anga wate wa ubagusi, unevu na zuluma wanaustahili pia kusikilizo wa shida zao. Hadija ananyeishi kwenye uonewa wa imani za kidini, majuto na kujiona mwenye hatia. Zinarusu, ubilashi na ukazibure wa maisha, uangamize. Sorry, Christina, you've got two minutes left. Ok, so... Kwa kumalizia, tunaweza kusema kwa makuambino ya mtindu wa mungiliano matini na kuunjika kwa utanzu wa matini, uimbo unawimbo kwa sauti ya kumungona na matawe ya mbuyo, unawasilisha kawuliza epistemologia jumuishi, isiweza kwa kikishwa, inayonganisha uliwengu wa walio hai na uliwengu wa mizimu. Wapiga ramli. Waliweza kufumbua lana au mkosi wakale uliorifiwa. Waliwita kinda la mlapeke. Au mtoto anayejipenda peke. Kini lana au mkosi wasili kwa nyeriwaya unamaanisha kwa mba kuzaliwa kwa musika. Usababisha mungine aliekua epokufa. Kwa mfano, omola alikuwa yatima na masumbuko ambaye jinalake linamanisha mateso anamua mama yake wakati anabuzaliwa. Ngoma ya madogori inapigwa kwa guwa mkosi uo na waganga. 
kuyomba mizimu ya tambiku luhusu watoto na sumbuko azariwe. Hata hivyo, Grace anafariki kakita mchakatu wa usazi. Tasnifu uh, yama mm, inazungukia kwa nyodadizi wa epistemolojia kuwapo au kuwa, ambayo mkufia anaipa jibu la mwisho katika nadharia yake ya udairi. Udairi ni kile mtuwa kitungu wacho pale anzapo kuwepo limwenguni au kudiririka kwa maisha kati ya kuzaliwa na kufa. Mkufia anatoa tazwira ya mgongano baina ya uyakinifu na udanaifu na pia katika epistemolojia nyingine badala. Kawa epistemolojia ya kushuku na ulinganishi ikelemea kwa nyo yakinifu wa ufamu, epistemolojia ya kutotabirikia na kutopambanuka, epistemolojia jumuishi inayoundwa na mambo ya uchawi, nyujiza na mambo ya shangazao au ya siyelezeka, epistemolojia ya imani zadini na epistemolojia jumuishi ya uyano wa maisha ya kutegemeana. Mkufia amekafanikiwa kwa nisha mijadala ya kifalsafa na adisi ambazo mtu yeyota na weza kuzisoma na kuzifuraia. Riwaya hii ni mfano wa epistemolojia ya kupinga ubaguzi au kandamizaji wa kipistemolojia wa kijinsia na ata wa kijadi. Asantani sana kwa kumisikilize. Thank you very much, Christina. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, very in-depth and... Um, yeah, my Swahili is not as good, so I was really be struggling to follow, but I'm sure everyone else follow very well. Uh, thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, we're now uh, going into um, our last presentation by Antonia Fent. Um, thank you for being here. And uh, Antonia, the floor is yours. And then we'll come back with everybody for some Q&A um, with all the panelists. Um, so Antonia, if you're ready, Yes, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So um, yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my talk, New Perspectives on the Swahili-based Youth Language Practice, Yabakran. Um, my presentation is structured as follows. I will start with a brief introduction into the youth language, Yabakran, and an insight into the current state of research. And after that, I will discuss selected saline features of the nominal, nominal and verb morphology. And finally, I'll end my talk with uh, concluding thoughts and an outlook. So, um, Yabakran is used by adolescents in Goma, the capital city of the North Kivu province, which is today home uh, to more than 1 million people. And um, as you can see on the map, Goma is located in the Swahili-speaking eastern part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo on the border with Rwanda. And uh, the area marked green shows where its base language, the region like Kiwu Swahili is spoken. Um, it must be noted that there is no common designation that is accepted by all speakers since um, the language practice is sometimes also known by other labels but Yabakran, however, appears to be the most widespread across youth communities in Goma. And uh, the name itself is composed of the Swahili connective Ya, the plural marker Ba, and the French lexicolon Kran, and uh, can be translated as language of the clever guys. And um, according to Nassenstein 2016, the community of practice of Yabakran speakers who are often known as Bakran or Bakankala, consists of 12 to 13 um, youth gangs in Goma. So the language is used among street youth, artists, and hip hop musicians. Um, Goma is a multi ethnic border town, which is marked by armed conflict and political instability. And um, as a consequence, the linguistic influences on Ya Bakran are extremely diverse since uh, French and Kivu Swahili are spoken, Lingala is increasingly used not only by soldiers and policemen, but also by young people, then uh, Kenya, Rwanda, and English, as well as more than 10 local languages like Kinande, Kihau, Kinyapuisha, Kihunde, and so forth are spoken. So um, up until now, Three recent papers are available for the Goma-based youth language, namely Nassenstein 2016, both 
2018 and Bose and Nassenstein 2020. And um, while the first two studies looked at Yabakran from a social linguistic perspective that emphasized the stylistic practice, Bose and Nassenstein 2020 laid um, the foundation for more profound typological analysis of Swahili based youth language practices like Yabakran. And um, yeah, based on this morphological a brief sketch, I extended the description of the line features of Yabakran, comparing them to its base language, Kivu Swahili. And um, in contrast to Sheng, the most well-known youth language from which we have already heard of today, uh, only very little comparative data from Yabakran is available. So therefore, the purpose of my talk is to investigate commonalities and differences between Kivu Swahili and Yabakran. So let's start. Um, when um, taking a look at the noun class systems of Kibu Swahili and Yabakran, one can see that they reveal the same semantic distinctions as in standard Swahili. Um, Kibu Swahili reveals um, 50 noun classes plus an additional class 19, which is unique in Kibu Swahili as it does not exist in any other Congo Swahili regiolect. And um, most noun classes have been retained from Swahili in its standardized form. However, there are specific additional classes that can be considered as structural borrowing from local languages. And um, I could account all the noun classes found in the base language also for uh, the youth language. And um, in uh, Kivu Swahili, diminutives are formed in noun class 12, uh, from which we have already heard of today from noun class 12, um, with their plural formed in class 13 for the diminutive, diminutive with a pejorative connotation, and class 14 for small concepts with a neutral connotation. And um, there are also double noun class prefixes, and the evaluative noun class prefixes rather serves as clitics because they can precede other noun class prefixes. And um, I could attest uh, these noun classes to express evaluative morphology also in my data on Yabakran. And um, interestingly, all four Swahili based youth languages share this feature um, that is absent in ECS. And of course that um, morphological manipulation and um, creative semantic strategies play a saline role in youth languages. So um, in Kivu Swahili, syntactic agreement has to be maintained between all modifiers of the noun phrase, but there are agreement breaks with noun class 10, mostly substituted with um, noun class six forms. And um, the fact that um, concordant patterns in Yabakran are largely maintained becomes um, evident in the uh, given example, uh, Kale Kademo Balikado Be, that small bad looking girl, they raped her. Uh, so the head preceding demonstrative Kale, the head noun Kademo and the object marker on the verb show agreement with noun class 12. Um, when um, comparing the base language and the youth language, however, it turns out that Yabakran follows the concordance patterns less stringent. So speakers of um, Kivu Swahili make a distinction whether the head is a mass noun. This is example 2a. Um, uh, and then we require the concordant patterns of class six, or it's a plural of a countable noun, which would be example 2b. And then we require the concordance patterns of class 10. And as you can see in example three, the youth language, uh, there is no such distinction. And um, what I find is another interesting aspect is that the um, unspecified quantifier moi from Lingala, which always precedes the head noun, is increasingly used by Yabakran speakers, um, as shown in the example. And it <clears throat> sorry, replaces the quantifier moya ivi, which always has to follow the head noun in the base language. And um, this is yet only one example which uh, should exemplify the saline role that Lingala plays. Um, the large majority of Goma residents do not routinely use Lingala in their daily interactions, 
but it plays an increasingly important role, which is why um, Bouchard, Dante, and Mewis 2013 state that Lingala possesses a high symbolic value, the use of Lingala indexes being a true Congolese, toughness based on Lingala's association with the military and urban sophistication based on its association with the capital Kinshasa and um, modern Congolese music. Um, in Kivu Swahili, in class six, not only the plural to class five is formed, but also generally the plural forms to nouns from class nine, 11 and liquids and mass nouns, as well as in combinations of double plural prefixes. And maybe this could favor the following point that um, in Yabakran, the plural marker ma of noun class six is often used as a general plural marker, especially when it, um, it comes to long words from French, like example 4A, uh, Lingala, example 4B, or English, example 4C. And um, this seems to be a common practice, not only in Yabakan, but also in other Swahili-based youth languages, which um, it can be argued that it is leading towards its development into a general plural marker. And um, furthermore, this is also a feature of the Lingala-based <clears throat> use language Yankee and has already been um, reported as a tendency of uh, standard Kinshasa Lingala. Okay, um, the expression of locatives shows um, a commonality between base and youth language, um, whereas in standards for Hili, we have a tripartite set of Pa, Ku, and Mu noun classes, the lo locative classes 17 Ku and 18 mu are only existent as locative markers in Kivu Swahili, um, <clears throat> but they do not function as full noun classes. And um, this is also the case in Yabakran, as you can see in the given examples. Okay, so um, the common threefold distinction of demonstratives in standard Swahili is in Kivu Swahili as well as in Yabakran reduced to a twofold distinction um, as indicated in the examples. And uh, another difference is that the demonstratives always precede the head of the noun phrase, which is a feature found uh, in most of the speaker's first languages. And um, interestingly, uh, in my data, Yabakran speakers also use the term mokili or yo, which is borrowed from Lingala. And um, I could show that demonstratives of noun class nine are frequently used without uh, referring to a noun belonging to a specific class, especially again, when it comes to long words like um, um, which is obviously a long word from French. And um, now I would like to move on to discussing saline features of the verbal morphology. So um, the fundamental structure of the Yabakan verb basically follows that of Kivu Swahili, where subject, object, and reflexive concords are affixed to the verb stem as a term and derivational markers. And um, in Kivu Swahili, um, a tendency towards loss of agreement can be observed, yet not to the same extent that I found in Yabakan. And um, in Kivu Swahili, the subject markers of noun classes three, five, six for mass nouns, 11 and 19 share the morphology of noun class nine. However, Kivu Swahili has, again, less simplified concordance than the youth language. And um, according to Shinagawa 2007, simplification and grammatical agreement is said to be one of the remarkable syntactic features of the mixed languages in general. And um, he accounts um, simplification process found in Sheng and reports that the reduced system of subject concords <coughs> could develop into a general animate in an animate inanimate opposition. So um, my findings on Yabakran correspond with his findings. And um, the following example shows that the youth language diverges from its base language. And um, 
in this respect reveals more similarity with uh, other Swahili-based youth languages like Sheng. <clears throat> where um, agreement marking on the verb is almost entirely done by class 910, which is why um, Shinagawa calls it um, a cover class. And um, hypothetically, it could be claimed that this could also be further favored through speakers orientation towards the Lingala speaking Kinshasa, because um, Lingala possesses morphological reduced concord patterns and has no class agreement. So it distinguishes uh, between um, subject markers for singular animate, plural animate, and singular or plural, plural inanimate references. Reference. Okay, so um, the tense and aspect forms of Kibu Swahili are in terms of their uh, remoteness considered as the most saline features in the verbal morphology. Um, Congo Swahili varieties like Kibu Swahili diverge from standard Swahili insofar as they have an aspectual suffix ak, which we already have talked about today. And this can be combined with uh, several prefix tense markers like na, li, and ta as a circumfix morpheme. Uh, which are sketched in the given table and again exemplified with evidence from Yabakan on the next slide. And um, this change in remoteness of tenses can also be ascertained from other Swahili based youth languages as um, the imperfective suffix occurs in different youth languages like Sheng, Luhaya, Mitani, and Kindibil as well. And um, According to Nassenstein and Bose, um, 2020, the imperfective suffix in the pre-final position is explained as a contact phenomenon and with other local Bantu languages and can be considered as a rather recent innovation in Swahili youth languages. Okay. So um, the verbal derivation patterns show a high number of commonalities in base and youth language um, that are illustrated in the given table. And uh, I was able to ascertain almost all the verbal derivations that constitute productive patterns in Kibu Swahili, also in Yabakan, uh, with one exception actually, whereas passive is a highly productive verbal derivation in the base language, my data shows that the use of morphologically marked passive voice seems to be obsolete in Yabakan, and instead the substitute structure of the imper uh, impersonal periphrastic construction with the third plural concordant bar, which does not mention the agent of the action is used by speakers. Uh, this is example 14. And uh, so the given example shows the unspecified subject construction where the subject bar could be paraphrased by someone or they, but we don't know them. So um, this way of avoiding passive morphology is also common for the Lingala-based youth language Yankee. And um, of course, the fact that my data does not show morphological passive could also possibly be um, because of the little data, but it still gives what I think the first insight into the direction of development of the loss of morphologically marked derivations in Yabakan. Okay, so um, thank you. Uh, to conclude, the presented results reveal that Yabakan shares some specific morphosyntactic features with its base language Kibu Swahili um, like we saw features um, like the non-class systems, the tens and aspects um, forms in terms of their remoteness or the verbal derivations that are retained in the youth language clarify the um, high number of commonalities. And um, furthermore, the general tendencies of simplification like the non-referring agreement um, already described for other Swahili-based youth languages could also be accounted for the Goma-based youth language and clearly show divergences from its base language. And um, 
Yeah, moreover, the saline role that Lingala plays for Yabakan speakers was emphasized and um, speakers' orientation to the Congolese capital Kinshasa reflects the morphological divergences of the youth language from its base language. And um, I think further studies with a microtypological approach should equally include phonological and syntactic features as um, my study has only shed light on some morphological properties and um, general tendencies of linguistic change that are found within all four youth language practices should be, I think, subject to more in-depth analysis with, um, of course, um, bearing in mind that youth languages are, of course, in a constant state of flux. Thank you all for listening, Asentini Sana. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonia. Uh, very interesting presentation. And um, I'm sure some of our linguists here will come in with some questions. Uh, so, yeah, so we can now uh, call everyone back and open the uh, QA. Uh, if anybody has any questions, um, you can either put them in the QA chat and I can read them out. Uh, or if you raise your hand um, as an attendee, we will be uh, we will we can allow you to actually say your questions. Um, so yeah, so anybody who has any question, we have now about twenty minutes left um, uh, to conclude our day of Baraza. Kakitu and Hibitu. Also, what did base language refer to? Thank you. Check it. Okay, um, so class 12 is actually the diminutive and class 19 refers to um, a specific amount or a specific, specific quantity of things. So it's, um, that's the difference. And uh, I referred to base language as um, like the language that um, yeah, Yabakan relies on uh, as a, matrix structure, let's say. That's how I understood or used the term base language. Thank you, Chege. Thank you. Um, okay. Maybe I can ask something to Christina. I was really uh, impressed by this sentence, which was, Ukitaka kumpata mbuzi, kamata mtoto wake. What was that? As in like, so it's in like, if you want to, I mean, get the, the goat, you should always get the kid, always get the, the child. And, and uh, yeah, the it was <laughs> a proverb that um, Kufia told me when we were speaking about why he used as the main characters about this history that is speaking about people suffering from HIV AIDS and why the two people uh, HIV positive are two, two young children because actually the character of Tuma, she, she's 16 and the young Haji is only 18 years old. So he said because he would like to, to make this Tanzia, this, this tragedy, uh, as much catastrophic as possible. And so he chose those children and he told me, in fact, think about the Waenga <laughs> Wanasem and Kamata I, I really like that very much. I never heard it before. And uh, I think I will now use it. It makes absolute sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and when was this, when was the novel published, Christina? Uh, 2019. Uh-huh. Uh, Lutz Martin has a question. We're going to allow him to talk. I <laughs> too, too kind of you, thank you. I will let you speak, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> also, was, Ruth will say the final words, so he might as well uh, get ready. Since <laughs> yes. I don't think we're... That's right, yes. Um, I know I'm, I'm, I'm warming myself up, but uh, I have, first of all, I have just a small question for, for Antonia. Um, and that was, I think that was right. It, I was interested in the um, class six, class 10 distinction and the countable non-countable because I think the examples you had was the for the countable one was cows maybe 
Um, and I think that's probably right, but I was curious because cows, of course, are animate. Um, so there's two, two semantic parameters involved. One is the countable, non-countable, but one is the animacy, non-animacy. And I was wondering whether the animacy may play a role in the agreement choice as well. Um, so the question would be really, what would happen if you have a countable non-animate noun and, and whether that would behave differently, if that makes sense. So uh, thank you. Um, as far as I know, animacy does not play a role in Kibu Swahili, but um, maybe uh, Nico Nassenstein as an expert for Kibu Swahili has a different view on that um, as I'm still the student. <laughs> Yeah, Nico, perhaps you want to say something, if you're there. Uh, well, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Oh, you can, okay. I, I was also allowed to speak, so. Yes, okay. yeah, we let you see. <laughs> um, yeah, practically, uh, the um, a, a bit different from uh, standard Swahili, animacy in Kivu Swahili, if I remember correctly right now, uh, um, for example, and, and most animals are, are also grouped in, um, well, would, would be grouped in 910, right? And would in, in, in some Swahili varieties then have uh, agreement with class one or two, maybe, or with nine and 10. And in, uh, interestingly, in Kivu Swahili, it's the case that they, as in neighboring Bantu languages like Kinyaranda and so on, they would have agreement of nine uh, in the singular and then, um, practically 10 in the plural, but all modifiers apart from the actual plural on the noun would be class six, um, no, differently. It would be class six would be the noun, ma, and all other modifiers would have z or ze, zenye, zilikua, and so on. So practically, um, and uh, um, so, so, so the enemacy thing, which, if I if I if I remember uh, Antonia's talk correctly, is um, similar in both, only that the countability plays a role, right? Um, that it falls together, the countable ones and the non-countable ones. So practically, maybe uh, if I don't know if that answers uh, your question, Lutz. Even um, let's say other countable things apart from animals like cows, uh, something like uh, let's say manumba. Zile Manyumba or something would uh, um, would 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 have the 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 class ten agreement and in well uh, according to the data then in 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 Yabakran most probably no longer it's in, it's an interesting thing eh? somehow I don't know if that makes sense now <laughs> um, yes I think I think it doesn't it's really it's a really interesting sub area what you do with the with with animacy humanness count and non-count, you know, it's really, and, and the different agreement patterns. Um, so this is really interesting data in, in a much wider comparative sense as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, Nico and Lutz. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there, there is a question, I think, uh, from Sa uh, Wilkinski on asking um, about the speaking of Swahili in the Congo forest, because um, is so that in a TV program, and I think yes, we did um, speak about the spread of Swahili, and um, perhaps if someone wants to comment further on the presence of Swahili in Congo, uh, maybe this question could be addressed to uh, Nico, maybe as you are there now. Yeah, maybe I can ask back. Uh, uh, what exactly is is asked for? Um, how far it's it has. Uh, uh, it was spread or in, in, in which kind of varieties, in which varieties it occurs or? Um... Uh, I think, now you say this is a generic question. I think uh, yeah. it's not very, uh, maybe knowledgeable about the spread of that. Ah, it's okay. just questioning yeah. the, the fact that he saw on a TV program that okay. he was speaking okay, there. Yeah. So maybe well, in some of the other presentations. Okay, um, yeah, maybe one could say the the, the the, the real periphery of Swahili and the boundary between especially Lingala and Swahili as languages of wider communication are in present day Kisangani and around present day Kisangani. So uh, the, the major or biggest city along the Congo River um, where until we had Tipu Tip earlier on, right? Where Tipu Tip was governor. And, and of course it was him and his troops and also some preceding them uh, who brought Swahili up to that point. 
Uh, and the further you come to the non-Swahili speaking areas, of course, so further westwards, uh, um, the more Swahili doesn't look like the, the coastal Swahili anymore. And uh, uh, concerning uh, uh, the forests where Swahili is spoken, um, maybe interestingly, uh, of course, if you are somehow off the, 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 the urban tracks somewhere really deep in the forest, let's say in Ituri or in the rainforest outside of Kisangani, not in the city, um, especially where uh, Swahili has been spoken for a long time, it's very often restructured that uh, um, to an extent that, um, especially for example, by hunter gatherers uh, in the area, the, the, the Aka, Baka and so on, uh, uh, um, uh, and so on, um, that it, it, it cannot even be clearly be categorized into one as one, one variety. So, so, so practically, we don't have those uh, um, isoclos that we find, for example, at the uh, at the East African coast. So, let's say um, if you're somewhere in deep in the Congo forest where people speak Swahili between Kisangani and Chopo and Ituri or the Kivus, for example, it's very hard to count it to one specific variety. If you're in the urban centers, it's quite easy. So, this is kind of a, a sociolinguistic city hopping. A model, maybe one could say, and it, but it's widespread in the Congo, in the all of eastern parts of the Congo, up to the north, towards um, the Aru Aru uh, district of Ituri province. So uh, there, it's Bangala. So the northern boundary is Bangala and Swahili. The western boundary is Lingala and Swahili. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Maybe I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> Uh, yes, I think it, it does. It does. Yes, it was about knowing more about the exactly the forest the people of the Congo and the relation with Swahili language. So yes, thank you very much. And uh, there was one more comment uh, from Chigigichiora, which I think it refers to what we were talking earlier. So it might be a little bit, uh, but I just say it anyhow that um, Chige said the Hizu Maniumba Nipo Asana occurs frequently in Kenyan Swahili. So just so. Um, yeah. Um, okay, I think uh, we don't have any more uh, questions. Perhaps we can um, um, just a few um, closing remarks to thank everybody uh, from uh, myself and I'll pass it on to Ida and then to Lutz Martin, who's going to say also a few words on behalf of SOAS uh, in, uh, in closing the Baraza of today. Um, we hope uh, you know you can um, yeah, stay connected as you always do, and um, we are um, you know we're looking forward to the next Baraza. Uh, time flies, as you know, <laughs> and then hopefully next year we're definitely uh, going to be able to host it on campus again, uh, and also hopefully with funding to be able to invite more people from East Africa. Uh, that will be um, really really good. Uh, so just from me, thank you very much. It was a very interesting day, as usual, uh, just all day around Swahili studies and Baraz is just so um, inspiring. And it was a long day, especially when we are sitting on a, at a desk like this, but for me personally, it's been a really fantastic day. So I thank you everyone. And uh, thank you, Ida, my colleague. And uh, Ida, uh, over to you to say a few words. No, yeah, thank you very, very much, everybody, for coming today. To our school, Sana Kwamba, me, me kuya, me, me kana sisi, to me zungumza, to me shirikiana, na to me pata, um, kama, um, or to me hisi kama tu popa moja leo. Asanteni, Sana, Sana, Sana. Na kama kuna kitu mbocha to me fanya, mbocha to me kosea, to nomba mtu samehe, hilo, hilo halikuwa, um, uh, sort of like we, 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 it's like we never intended for you to feel unhappy or anything. We're just really happy that we spent the day together today. Let me just say, I although this was online today and we, we did not have pilau and biryani and sambusa and all that, I feel we had some excellent presentations today. I had a really lovely, lovely day. I learned so much. And I'm so happy that you all came. Karibuni sana. Na kama mtakuwa London, karibuni soas, tupo. Wakati wawote ule. Na tumefurai sana kwamba uh, watu wengi wamejiunga nasi pamoja na chege. Ambaye ndio mwanzilishi mwenzetu. Na tunaona pia kuna, kuna watu wengi wa swahili wengi wamekuja. Asanteni sana. Sayibi na, na pitisha fimbo kwa...
uh, Professor Lutz Martin ambaye yeye pia ni mkuu wa uh, Africa section hapa soa sasa hivi na uh, karibu sana Lutz Asante uh, asante as, 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 um, thank you very much everyone I mean I, I won't I won't uh, stay long but I just wanted to say thank you to to the organizers um, in particular Angelica and Ida and everybody who's been working behind the scenes uh, thank you to the to the presenters thank you to people who came um, it's really nice to keep this tradition going um, and you know many of you have been here for few, for, for past barazas I think some of us have been for all of them um, so it's really nice to build up that community and people meeting together. It's really nice to see new faces as well, of course. We want to grow. I think, I think for me, what is really important is this focus on a particular language in a particular region, which cross-cuts disi cross -cuts disciplines. It's so important that, that it is important, of course, to continue in our own disciplines in history, sociology, legal studies. But, but to bring it together on a day like this and to have this trajectory like almost like like a journey. Many people spoke about boats and and to, you know, seafaring um, culture, which is very appropriate. And in a sense, it's a little bit like this. If you if you look at the day how it went by, we talked about language, of course, in many ways, uh, but very technically on morphology. We talked about lexical relationships, then the syntax, a lot about discourse, about about pragmatics and how language language is used. But we also talked about literature, of course, how language is used in literature, and then and then that links you to culture. To sociology, to, to the, the societies in which in which language has spoken, to history, to even legal studies. So we talked about religion, about law, um, and all that focusing on a particular particular area. So I think that was really important. Um, and the other thing I think I think the, the final thing I guess is what is really nice is to to see how language you know language relates to meaning in so many different ways. So so language is an it's an opening to meaning at the semantics of it by learning a foreign language by reflecting on our own language. It allows us to reflect on 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 the semantics and semantic links between different forms, different speakers, different times. But also, as we've seen, the the art of language to to be more subtle. So we talked about metaphors and how some language use is used more to indicate and almost to hide something, but again in a very subtle and meaningful way. And I, I think that was really fascinating to see how that how that is brought out as well. Um, and then the other final thing is um, language language contact. Of course, we looked at translation. We looked at loan words. We looked at how words travel. I think Martin, I, you know, I, I always saw I didn't I didn't get to ask a question, but I always like Martin's talk because they are so detailed and they really link the, the the study of the words with the speaker communities behind them. So it's it's really fascinating to see to see that. Um, but of course, then there's also translation of political terms, of, of, of literary terms. Um, and again, it's really enriching to, to see that. Um, I think that that was the final thing. I'm really happy about the transition. I think lots of future plans have come out. I, you know, and we saw that in the discussion, I already think, oh, this would be a really exciting thing to do. Oh, this would be a nice area to follow up. More, more than we all have time for, of course, that's always the problem. There's more, more ideas than time. But but I think that's one of the good things about these days that they bring out you know, new ideas and, and change your thinking and inspire for, for new projects. Um, so I hope we can follow at least some of them are continue the conversation. You know, we're all networked um, and we can speak on the email, you know, have, have Zoom conversations. Um, and I think it would be very nice to, to follow it up like that. Uh, with that, thank you again very much. Asanteni kwa bote. Um, and we're looking forward to Tanana. Waka um, we're looking forward again to seeing you at the next Paraza. And I hope we can the, can keep the condition the, the the series going. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, and have a good evening, morning, day, wherever we are. <laughs> Asante yeah. sana sana. Asante ni sana. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say a big uh, open uh, uh, thank you. Oh, I put it in the chat, but also to Akil Bozi, who has been mm. really, really. Without thank him, uh, actually, we would have not been able to have this online. So. Sorry, Aki, I should have said that earlier. Um, and yes, just thank you to Aki and to my other colleagues in my team as well for the promotion of this conference and uh, for supporting us uh, um, with the conference that from SOAS. Thank you again, thank you everybody. Asante. Asante. Asante.